This lecture features case studies of sustainable buildings from different parts of the world in the context of tropical climate, providing main characteristic data on building location, envelope, and energy performance. The first case study is related to a low energy building. Umoja House is a shared diplomatic compound which includes the British High Commission, the Embassy of the Federal Republic of Germany, the Embassy of the Kingdom of the Netherlands, the Delegation of the European Commission, and the United Kingdom's Department for International Development. Umoja House is considered to be a fitting response to the city of Dar es Salaam and its climate. The design is carried out by the team Building Design Partnership, BDP. To prevent overall heat gain, the building have a floating solar roof and external lowers on three of its elevations. Materials were sourced locally wherever possible and supported via local agents and contractors. Design brief aims firstly to create a secure building, then to build according to European standards in a country with an extremely aggressive climate. Moreover, to provide the client with acceptable internal conditions with due regard to sustainable energy sources. The total construction cost of the building was 2.5 million pounds. The building is positioned with respect to the movement of the sun. The longer facades have a north-south orientation, while the shorter facades face east and west to avoid morning and evening sun. The glazed surfaces in all facades are protected by shading devices comprising stainless steel screens, which both shade the building and exploit the daylighting to maximize the visual comfort of the users throughout the year. Moreover, these solutions promote energy savings due to the reduction of the heat load in the building. They also reduce the solar direct thermal load. The building has a form that allows daylighting and natural ventilation with rooms that are not very deep and with windows protected from solar radiation. Secondly, the building makes use of the stack effect as it is designed in such a way that it allows air movement, colder air moves in as the warm air rises. The building has a rainwater harvest system that collects water in the basement. This water is used for cleaning the building and irrigation of grass. The other case study is related to nearly zero energy buildings. By definition, a nearly zero energy building is a building with very high energy performance in which the nearly zero or very low amount of energy required should be supplied to a very significant extent by energy from renewable sources, including energy from renewable sources produced on site or nearby. The Hawaii Gateway Energy Center complex is situated on the south coast of Kona, on the big island of Hawaii. It serves the Natural Energy Laboratory of Hawaii. The complex houses administrative office spaces, restrooms, support areas, and a large multi-purpose space used for displays, dissemination, conferencing, and education. Despite its impressive appearance, the Hawaii Gateway Energy Center is rather small. It has a total floor area of about 335 square meter. The main axis of the building is oriented east-west for ideal shading and delighting. There is no need for artificial lighting during daytime because the building is entirely daylit. When electrical lighting is needed, occupancy sensors and the photo sensors control fixtures. The high quality of indoor environment is due to excellent daylighting, views, ventilation, and thermal comfort. All of the occupied spaces offer substantial view as virtually all the south and north elevations feature glass shaded from direct sun. The ventilation design is based on stack ventilation. Windows are fixed as operable windows would not interfere with the chimney effect. Cross ventilation was considered undesirable as it would have introduced noise 
wind and dust. Passive thermal chimneys move air without mechanical equipment, allowing conventional air conditioning to be eliminated. The cooling system uses seawater to reduce energy consumption. Cold, deep seawater pumped from 900 meters below sea level passively cools the fresh air, which in turn cools the building. The only energy consumed for the cooling is that used to run the seawater pump. The building maintains temperatures between 22 degrees Celsius and 24.5 degrees Celsius without mechanical controls. Ventilation rates range from 8 to 15 air changes per hour, exceeding health code requirement of 3 to 4 air change per hour. Indoor humidity is maintained at between 55% and 65%. The building is well insulated for its climate. The U value for the mass walls is 0.158 watt per meter square Kelvin, while for the windows is 1.1 watt per meter square Kelvin. With its energy efficiency design strategies and the 20 kilowatt photovoltaic system, this energy center is a zero energy building that actually exports electricity. The photovoltaic system produces more energy than the building uses. While in Europe, it is expected that by the year 2050, some 25-30% of the building stock will have been built. In developing countries, that figure can be estimated at close to 75%. If all these new buildings are as energy consuming as the present ones, it will be impossible to meet the target of curbing CO2 emissions to an acceptable value. The building sector must therefore do its part. And the long-term goal is to transform buildings from energy consumers into net energy producers, as demonstrated through the case studies presented in this lecture. The challenge is unprecedented and will require a radical transformation of the methods of designing buildings. The reduction of CO2 emissions by reducing energy consumption is the top priority facing the construction industry today.